Hello, I'm Richard Vobes. Welcome to my review video. Normally I'm out and about in the countryside walking and talking, exploring, finding out things, but occasionally when I need a bit of kit, I buy a piece of kit and then I thought I'd share my results with you because it may be of some use. For a while now I've been using my gimbal, which is one of the three axis smooth gimbals and I'm very happy with that. I put a GoPro on there and I'm walking and talking with my gimbal here and I get this very smooth result and it's brilliant. I, I'm loving it. What did we do before we had gimbals? I hear you cry. Well, I don't know. But in order to record the sound, I was using um, a handheld microphone, which I know wasn't ideal, but other than that, I had radio mics. But that meant having too many boxes strapped to me and fiddling about with the radio frequency and having it coming across, just too complicated to be up and running. And what I wanted was a lavia microphone or a tie clip microphone, as I preferred to call them. And I, there's many options out there. There's cheap ones and there's more expensive ones. And I've actually plumped and gone for the Rode Lavia microphone. Now, Rode is a, an interesting make. They are broadcast spec. Um, they come in a little bit cheaper than the broadcast Sennheisers and um, Audio Technicas and all the other sort of makes that you can get out there. It's an Australian company and it seems to be very well respected in the vlogging sphere. sphere. There are other sort of microphones like the little uh, micro that can sit on top of your camera or your DSLR camera and that works quite well. But I wanted um, a little microphone that's uh, on me that goes into a pocket recorder because I'm using a GoPro and the GoPro mic, you know, um, I don't know, some of the GoPros don't record inputs. It's on a gimbal anyway, so you can't really attach anything to it because it's got to be free so it can float. Um, so I just wanted to take the sound separately. That way I've got more control over the sound. Plus the fact the motors on the gimbal, those three axis motors, they do make a bit of a noise and a rumble and I don't really want any of that in there. I just want to gather my voice if I'm talking and the surrounding countryside or whatever the environment is. So that all makes perfect sense. So obviously I've gone for this Lavia microphone. Now, the thing I should say with um, Rode is it's, I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing because there's pluses and minuses on this. Some Rode microphones you can buy and they have your mini, mini jack or perhaps they'll have the XLR standard sort of professional plug-in uh, plug. But with the Rode, this one, it, they come with their own little connector, which is a tiny little connector. I'll undo this. I'm quite loath to, to do it really, but I'll undo this. It's a tiny, it's their own proprietary connector. The idea being that you can connect this tiny little connector to their range of additional connectors. So in this case, this quite chunky thing here is an XLR, which can go into a pocket recorder if it has an XLR, but you may want a mini jack or you may want a big jack. Um, is it the 3.5 or a half inch jack? Well, you buy a separate thing. But these aren't cheap on their own for what they are, I don't think, personally. Um, then what you do, and you do need a good pair of eyes, and I've only got the one, you screw this thing on. Well, I've been told that the thread on this and the connector you could hang from it. But don't expect to hang from the wire, of course. Um, that would be daft. So the Lavia microphone is actually very slim line, very small, um, and you almost think, how can something that small give you any kind of sound? It naturally goes on the inside of whatever it is you're wearing um, in terms of threading the wire, and then you can clip it. Ideally, you want to clip a microphone downwards so that you get a minimum amount of pop, and I'm doing this a bit cack-handedly just for quick demonstration. Um, that comes with a little foam, tiny little foam, I know you can't really see that, tiny little foam which goes on, which if you're in the studio that's great because it stops a few pops from the uh, explosive P's and B's that you might, I don't want to lose that, so I'm going to shove that down. And if you're outside, it also comes with its own little fluffy, and that's quite good, it fits in there pretty well. The only thing about these things is they're blooming obvious, um, I'll show you some footage in a second, um, and they do stick out 
quite a lot. I have heard that people in the profession will sew them into uh, their jacket lapels, um, TV programs and that sort of thing, will hide them uh, in other ways and that, that gets rid of the wind noise, uh, which is what these are designed to do, um, and then you don't actually see it. But when that's stuck on you, it is it's like one of those funny little bugs that garages or promotional people hand out with a little streamer on the end. They're a bit noticeable, but they're essential to get rid of the wind because like all things, microphones are very susceptible to any kind of wind. Now I can't undo the thing, so perhaps I won't bother. Um, then you get about, I think it's a meter and a bit um, wire. Uh, it is quite thin. That's a good thing because you don't want anything too chunky. I haven't had it very long. Um, microphones that I always use, I find the wires always wear out after a while because these are the weakest points at the connectors. Um, so I always w worry about that. But if you look after it, I guess it's going to last you uh, a fair amount of time. It's not a cheap microphone. I would say that um, it isn't a cheap microphone, but the results are very good. So I think that's nice. You get this plastic box that comes with it, which is a robust box um, and it clamps down like that, which is quite handy. So you can keep the mic. I mean, it comes with a you know a little foam thing for holding bits and all the usual rubbish that comes with it. Uh, but I got rid of all of that and I just keep the microphone um, still connected to this because you don't need to take that off and wire it all up on there and it's fantastic. But the main thing is you're interested in what does it sound like? So uh, I went and did uh, some recording for my Walks in England series with a Bald Explorer and um, I'll show you a snippet of that now. Nepcote is famed for its sheep fairs. There's an annual sheep fair here in September, I think the first or second week in September and the green that I'm walking on now is and over time has been packed with sheep. Farms on the South Downs over the centuries are famed for their sheep and I think the South Downs was a breed of sheep that was particularly prevalent here. So there you are, that's a, a little bit of me wandering about with the microphone. It recorded in one channel on my recorder. I put it into a Zoom H4, which is a pretty old one, not the Zoom H4n, but the earlier Zoom, uh, if you know what that is. Uh, and of course, if you get the different adapter, you can plug it into whichever recorder you want. Bear in mind, with this particular uh, make, uh, with this particular um, microphone, it needs phantom power, plus 48. So without that, it won't work. So I've got another Zoom, uh, which is an H2. Doesn't work with that one because it's not phantom powered. So you do need some phantom power with the microphone, but the results are pretty good. And this did a good job of getting down the wind. I've just got to find a way really to hide it now so that I don't look like I've permanently got this lump of fluff on, on me, which does look a bit ridiculous. Um, so from that aspect, I think it's very good. Um, I would recommend it. I've seen other people using them in studio situations and the sound quality is marvellous. As I say, I recorded it on one channel. I then put it into a bit of sound software. I turned it from a, a single channel to double channel or just to mono. And then I did boost it uh, in the sort of After Effects of sound, not in After Effects program, but in a, in a separate audio program. I just boosted it up with a bit of bass and, um, and that's what you hear there. So thank you very much for watching my review. I'll review some more bits and pieces as and when they come along and let you know an honest opinion. Check out the links below in the uh, description box and you can check out exactly the product and have a look at it and see what you think. Uh, write a comment if you wish. If you enjoyed this video or any of my videos, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. That will be great. And if you do, press the bell notification button and then you'll be alerted every time I upload a video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. It's been great to see you and talk to you. Until the next time, bye-bye.